<laughs> what is with the face? It's just like the villain face. You know, I've I suddenly got a restraining order. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Don't know if I can after that. Yes. Oh, that should be the intro. Just, you should have the song. Broker, boom, boom, boom. Broker, blood. I'm going to kill your dad. I've got to... <laughs> <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of the Forgotten Podcast. I'm your host Catman and John. We're joined here once again by none other than the cynic himself, Mr. Mass Cynic. How unfortunate. Indeed it is. So today, although we normally take a more casual approach when making these episodes of our show and talk about topics more related to us such as gaming news or YouTuber news uh, or YouTube news in general, we thought we'd talk about what's currently happening in the world. Uh, more specifically, we're going to be discussing the current situation uh, with Ukraine and Putin and obviously, well obviously, Ukraine's obviously getting invaded by Putin of course and his grandmother, you know what I'm saying? Fuck! Ah! His grandma or his grandma? It's, it's grammar. I, I, I fucked that. Why did I write like you that? I just want to clarify real quick for everyone watching. We are now not a political channel, nor yeah. is this ever going to be a political cop... cop, cop, cop not going to be a political podcast because, one, we don't have the brain capacity to do that anyway, apparently. And no. also, you know, we still want to touch on things that are very relevant. And I feel like if we don't address these things, it can, you know, kind of slip past. And we kind of want to be there. So if we have one our intake, we don't have to constantly speak about it. In t so, say if Joe's streaming, he doesn't want to speak about the constant economic state of yeah, Ukraine. It, it, uh, it's kind of been a, it's, it's been a big discussion amongst my community and obviously streams. One of the people like Dino and Sam B, many other peeps in the community, of course, Rogue Rabbit and other peeps, good friends of mine. Um, we've all kind of been really discussing heavily, of course, this whole kind of like, you know, is this World War Three? Are we about to enter this? The whole situation, of course, with Ukraine being invaded, or uh, Ukraine being invaded by Russia, of course, um, by Putin, obviously. And now this is like, I think it's like, what, 14? It's two weeks now, I think, it's been going on, I believe. I, I'd have to check. Yeah, it started on I the, feel like they've been on the border longer, but they haven't. Oh, yeah. They've invaded for like two weeks straight now yeah it's actually um, today in fact right now as we record this this is actually uh the, the 10th of march uh, 2022 of course you'll probably see that in the intro um but actually that the invasion was launched on the 24th of february so this actually being two weeks today on the 10th and uh as far as we're seeing ukraine actually give give them their due you know ukraine is actually holding strong and that is for, with uh, the circumstance they have been given they are dealing with it phenomenally well, oh yeah I, have you seen it like yeah yeah definitely I, I think it's like undoubtable to say that like they aren't exactly uh they aren't running away they're, they're dealing with this in a, a, like a mad way Do you see some of the ukrainian farmers towing russian tanks and stealing them? oh shit yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it's been that like, is and brilliant Ima that is being, mad uh, you know dictator ussr head you know rose up from a german spy and now you're running russia right and you're like i'm mm. gonna invade this country and you just get fucking outdone by a tractor I mean, inherently, like, there's been, I think there was, like, a, there was memes being made of it. Like, not memes as in this is a joke, but it's, it's genuinely serious, like, but it's, it's comedic. Yeah, happening. because it's, like, this is insane how resilient the Ukrainian people are. Like, for example, there was TikToks being made by women and whatnot, men, of, like, how to, how to use tanks. Like, or how to, yeah. you know, start vehicles that are found on the road that were ex, obviously, Russian how to vehicles. how them as well. Yeah, and it's, like, what the fuck? This is like modern day. This is modern day warfare. This is insane. I've never this is about seen so such a, a nation that is so patriotic and memey at the same time. Yeah. Have you seen? Uh, in a, it's like in a. It's like a, I think it was in a Ukrainian um, like uh, block of flats, right? And mm -hmm. you know, like the music you play in like 2014 Minecraft intros. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They're like, like yeah, yeah. blasting it, and like we're going to die to the music. And I'm like, oh my, oh my god, god. You know, that's how I want to go. The the, the like, resilience of the people. I mean, there was also another thing, right? Um, and I'm sure everybody probably watching this has heard about this. They were, and this was ingenious. I can't lie. They fucking they took down the signs on the roads to tell you how to get to locations and replaced them, or like the the actual digital signs. You know, like how there's like digital boards on the highways that tell you like, oh, so far. So they were put, they were putting messages up they're saying fuck you and it's like what the like this is like absolute like, like resilience but like amazing I know at the same I'm time. an absolute cynic and ass when it comes to humans in general um, and no one deserves to die in war like mm -hmm. I, I get that I, I, I've got a bit of a, no, a no. mental thing where it's kind of like I feel like in some cases when it's like if people are willing say so I, I think there should be a law if two people are willing to fight to the death they should be allowed to but this is why I'm against this because you know these people aren't consenting to being bombed. I mean, um, yeah. But th what, what I'm going on with this is because <laughs> overall, the whole situation, 
it like the fact that they can find such a light-hearted thing out of it and joke about it it shows that these are these are people you know real people yeah genuine yeah, real people uh, and i mean like i did you did you see that sorry cotton did you see the twitter of uh, the, the ukrainian twitter right so what was happening mm. was they were posting that and they did get some flack for this and understandably so right obviously in this oh, kind of situation oh. but they were posting memes like making mm -hmm. memes of this, like of, of the situation, but like not in like in a sense where like this is a joke, but in a sense where like just making humor of the fact that they are like they're being so resilient. Now, there was other stuff as well going on with the actual Twitter. Some people were a bit kind of flaky towards what the Twitter was doing, and I can understand because it was a little bit kind of but, bad but that's timing. That's people are like, and that's yeah, well, like, yeah, you try to make the like, best of a bad in situation. World War Two, World War Two. Did you see there was countless videos of old soldiers imitating Hitler? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Hitler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. It's just the same thing. It's like it, it's just how people are, and I think that's fantastic. But even through all of the shit they've been through, they can be like, look, this is pretty fucking funny. You know, it is that is, it is great. That's Have humanity. You, it's been a bit of a mad situation, I say, because we're right now we're we're two weeks into the conflict and it's like Holy shit! Like I remember when this first was happening, right? Because again, for anybody at home that doesn't already know, this has been this has been happening even before we really started hearing about it in the news. Like it, I think a lot of people kind of only you know clicked on when it was like it was happening. The invasion started right February twenty fourth, mm -hmm. but there was a lot going on, obviously, of course, um, beforehand. Like you know, I think it was like way back. I'm trying to find the exact dates here because we got some notes. And um, but there was like a, a weeks prior, like back in November of twenty twenty one, right? Not February twenty twenty two. Back in November. Um, uh, the, the actual uh, Ukrainian president—I forget his name here. My apologies. Um, but the Ukrainian president—he actually was like, uh, he was, he was like saying, you know, there was satellite photographs being taken, obviously, just outside Ukraine's borders. So, some, some sort of police car racing past. Not sure why, but there was just being a uh, just, just a bomb. Um, but there was, it was being there was satellite photographs being taken, and it was showing troops, like Russian troops, were building up, up to about a hundred thousand troops and military vehicle and personnel were building up on the actual border of obviously Ukraine. And uh, the president, of course, of Ukraine had made this aware. He told you know NATO he had made you know the European Union aware, you know something's going to happen. Putin continuously declared that you know there was no invasion planned, there was nothing going on. And then it was weeks later, of course, February 24th, that he made his demands known to the West. I, I don't believe it was February 24th that he made his demands known to the West, but it was like somewhere near there. But it happens. Yeah, it, well, that's it happened. I mean, like, I've got the actual thing here. I'm just trying to find the exact note. I'm not sure how um, long they were there for, but they were there for a mm -hmm. while on that border and they were, you know, proper egging it on. It's like the whole, what, what I was going to say with the whole um, joking about things is yeah. uh, like, even though this, this is a, an abysmal situation, but did you see the, is it Snake Island or Rattlesnake Island? Oh, I heard, yeah, I heard about that. I didn't see it, yeah. The, uh, it is one of probably my favorite moments in history ever. And, you know, they shouldn't have lost their lives to it, but it is fantastic, right? So I, I, I don't think I've got the island name correct, but I will just call it Rattlesnake Island just because for the sake of this bit of commentary. Um, mm -hmm. But there's an island inhabited by some species, like a lot of it, and that's what it's notorious for. So there's not much human life there. Um, it was guarded by, and you're probably thinking, you know, this is an island. It's probably guarded by a lot of people, right? This place is guarded right. by 13 Ukrainians, right? 13? Yeah, 13, one free. Uh, and they're, they're defending this island. Uh, and you know what they, what Russia sends to take out these 13 Ukrainians? <laughs> a what? warship. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? So they radio in saying, hey, you guys uh, don't surrender your fire. We're going to bomb you. Um, Holy shit. Which they say off radio, so they're not on the radio yet. They say, right, guys, this is it. They, they, they've, they've acknowledged the fact that they... The, they, they the Ukrainians, this is this. They've yeah, acknowledged this is the Ukrainians. that, yeah. They radio back. Right. Go fuck yourselves. <sighs> Famous last words. God damn, what did they obviously get that, bombed? That was it. And they, yeah, they got bombed. But like, that, God like, damn. What a, you know, what a result, is, like... The, what a resilient way to go like what a is what a way to go of ukraine oh yeah yeah the, i think there's there's so many heroes being seen right now in ukraine i mean the the ukrainian people are such like again the the i know the th like the the power that they have in themselves to be able to deal with this i mean there's apparently like the, i've seen on twitter and whatnot, other places there's like famous actors and people that are from ukraine that are coming back or going back to ukraine to take up arms and to actually defend the country you know what i mean and it's like what an actual noble like what a level of patriotism to like like to go back and fight for your country when you don't have to you don't live there you maybe had friends or maybe you did live there but you don't have to know but you will go back and go fight for them and it's like wow that's that's genuinely insane it's not insane in a bad way but in a very commendable and respectful way you know what i mean 
It, it's yeah, madness. I, I assume you also know the the reason behind Putin's invasion or what he's claimed it to be. I I know yeah what it what he's claimed it to be why. Well, I'm just like I just think overall it's like you'd think at the very least this whole situation as how drastic it is there would be a genuine reason behind it. Oh yeah, yeah like some sort of valid provocation. But there isn't. Of course. There is just him saying, you know, we want this back for because of the old, you know, Russian Union and stuff. Yeah. But the main thing that he's told the Russian, you know, public is it's run by neo Nazis. Mm -hmm. Even though all of um, seriously, yeah, or even though all of uh, is it Kiev is their main is their capital, right? Kiev. Yeah, yeah, Kiev's their capital. Yeah, Kiev was there before Moscow. Was it? Yep. And they and they claimed and Russia was claiming that this society built up by Russia is run by neo Nazis. And it's like, well, was it made by Russia? No. And they're not uh, neo Nazis. Mean, see, from what I've seen, right, uh, and this was what Putin, this is apparent this is a quote right here. And um, Putin claimed that the Russian like that the Ukraine belongs to Russia, right? Yeah. Belongs to Russia and that they are one people being quoted as saying we aren't just close neighbors, we are one nation. And this was like back in March 18th, 2014. Um, but it, it's kind of ironic saying that because it's like, it's just not the case. Uh, if you don't know, and a lot of people don't know this. I didn't know this until doing more research for this script. And of course, looking into, of course, with all the stuff that's been happening. Um, Ukraine has its own language. They, I, I honestly, you know, inherently, you know, call it, um, I don't know, blindness, call it, you know, stupidness, call it, you know, just lack of awareness. I honestly would have thought that in Ukraine, they spoke maybe Russian, right? I didn't know they had a different language. I think but Ukrainian no. is very heavily... Yeah, it's like it, it sounds very similar yeah Russia. it's Russian, yeah yeah it, yeah it there, there's a lot of similarities not russian exactly yeah and that's what it was so ukraine is a sovereign nation with its own language culture and political system and it's like how can you go and say that that's that, that's yours you know how can you say that we're one people like no like it's funny because as well like again going into this of course right um ukraine I, again if you look into it, ukraine has been wanting to leave like get into nato for like years like literal years like I, it's got like the dates here I, I found right and it was like um it was uh, 2014 i believe it was was it 2014 yeah, oh no 2013. 2013 it was 2013 you, yeah ukraine like, pulled in 2014 no though. what, what it was was that. that was what no in 1994 ukraine um wanted to become a nato partner and they did and like that's like uh I, I didn't know about this but like obviously with nato to join it it's like there's steps beforehand. You can't just join. You know what I mean? Like you have to become a partner, then you can become a member, and then it like it goes like that. So they became a partner back in 1994, which brought them like obviously a step closer to becoming a member of NATO. And then in 2013, they reached an association agreement with the European Union. Um, but when it came time to seal uh, to actually sign the deal, Ukraine's pro-Russian government refused because it was obviously like the, the Ukraine's president back in 20, uh, 2013 apparently was pro-Russian. There was a lot of like actual, you know, like there was a lot of internal like obviously people that were actually pro-Russian that were with them staying with Russian. So what uh, Russia, excuse me. So what they done was even though they had reached an agreement, they were about to sign to join NATO. That went uh, that that just went completely south, right? Uh, from my understanding, at least here, from what I could find research wise, that went completely south, right? And um, basically, it just it went in the complete other way. And instead, what happened was they they reinforced their connections with Russia, and that caused mass like so just it mass. Didn't go south, it went east. It went east, yeah. It, like legitimately, it caused massive outrage. There was protests for like months and months and months. And then this is what led up to the president, like back then, this, the ex president now, being uh, being overthrown or like not overthrown, but like actually advocating Voted running out. away. Yeah, because um, what he done was these were peaceful protests. That it was just it was all just the Ukrainian people that were just saying we want to join the European Union, we want to join Europe. You know, we want we want to be with Europe. That's what it is. Well, they want that, right? They've been oppressed by you know Russia, of course, with the Soviet Union until it's fallen back in 1991. They they want to be with Europe, right? This was a peaceful protest for months and months and months. Um, what happened was the president just before he got like kind of obviously kicked out of being the president he actually went and killed a hundred of the protesters not himself obviously of course but he declared it like he wanted help. he wanted to end the protests niche. yeah he went mm -hmm. he wanted to end the protests by obviously using lethal force a hundred protesters plus were killed and with that ironically it caused more protests which made him have to flee the country and he went to i believe it was belarus i think i'm trying to i'm trying to remember right here yeah, it was belarus it was belarus yeah he he, he ran away you know what I mean? And he disappeared to Belarus. Or no, he fled. It was it, yeah, with him fleeing to Kyiv. It was at Kyiv, um, which Putin yeah, obviously went. Kyiv, kind of, yeah. There was something about Belarus though. I yeah, yeah. It, I believe he did. He did flee to Belarus. Belarus after or something, I believe. Because I'm it's sure like, he wouldn't have just gone 
to give. No, 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 no. But no, what it was was after I said after he got overthrown. Obviously, it wasn't even overthrown. He, you know, like polit- like this is mass outrage by the public. Obviously, from protesters being killed, it stepped up protesting. Ironically, even more. Right. This is this is really ra- peculiar to me though, because this has happened before, and I'm really surprised it hasn't happened to Putin. Uh, well, I think. That's a really valid question. Why is like so? I mean, this was being said as well. Like, why is nobody just went? And I mean, like, I'm not saying like nobody isn't like no, you know anybody, but it's like I'm not saying why like, is no nobody one sat there and was like you know yeah yeah yeah, okay. yeah yeah yeah. But I it's mean, like, like it's like why is why power. is nobody went and why why is nobody went and and just taken him out? You know what I mean? Like he's 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 in, he's obviously like, off the loop. You know what I mean? Work with him, etc. Yeah, know? like I mean, I'm it's... surprised no one there has been like I don't like this and I made an action because. You know, obviously, it's a very military, you know, population. They're very, that's their culture. Oh, maybe. yeah. That's how they've incorporated They're very it rough people as well. Like, very so hardcore people. They are. the hard as nails. But, like, yeah. I'm surprised none of them has turned around and, like, just, like, shot him or something. Like, I, I'm, I, I'm honestly really surprised by that. Like, I just feel like all these people that are working under him, right? Like, they, 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 they can't all have to be, you know, completely brainwashed by it. No, this, surely, I mean, obviously, I feel like death will be threatened. If well, they I think, do try, yeah. obviously. Yeah, of course, but of course. If he's if they succeed, who's gonna stop them? Well that's it. I think I think it was like um I remember what was it? This was a few weeks ago. He made a statement to the whole world and it was um anybody who tried I've got the, the exact quote here, right? And it was it was really like eerie how he done it, right? Um, and I'm just trying to find the exact statement because it was like this is about the oh, interference. This this was yeah, about the interference, right? He could, he was calling this all a special military operation and whatnot. Um, but I'm just trying to find the exact quote that he said. I don't want I don't want to miss like misquote this, right? But it was like so eerie, you know what I mean? Like the way in which he said it. But the main part was anyway. After this was him basically threatening the world. Basically, this is what it was it was him threatening the entire world. Um, if I can find it, right? And uh, this, what he said was, whoever tries to stop us should know that Russia's response will be immediate and will lead to such consequences that you have never fear, uh, never faced in your history. And it's like, what the fuck? Right. Like, eerily, like, what the fuck you did? Like, you haven't faced in your history. Well, I feel like that's like, I like that's not just getting shot or that's not just this a war or an invasion. Is that's what led me to one of my biggest opinions on this is, mm. and it's quite on the fence because. I, I think nuclear war is very, very put, like possible. Uh, my reasoning for this is obviously Putin's a bit backwards with his morale, uh, and, mm. but that's not the reason. That's not the reason at all. And it's not also it's not it's also not because that they own over two hundred nuclear weapons. It's not that they've, they've got more than I think they've got like the, they've got like they're the leading country in the world with two hundred twenty one. I swear. It's, it's really, they like also. That. They also have the um, what's it called? There's like the, the biggest uh, the biggest nuclear bomb there's ever been created. They, they have that. What the SAR bomber? Yeah, and they were making. I think it's. I'm not too sure. The SAR bomb. I'm pretty sure it's called the SAR bomb. The I think. SAR I know. Bomber. Yeah. And, they, and um, go ahead. Sorry. I think they've only detonated one in history. And yeah, yeah. If, just for a uh, per, per, fucking hell, just for a you know to put that into a picture. There you go. Uh, the radius of that is if you dropped it in the middle of London, the end of the radius would be in Kent half of kent which is where i am so yeah, i would be affected by that they are and apparently working on a, a part two dude i don't know if you heard about this they, they were actually apparently a part two that's cynical. They, they were but, making an even more powerful bomb and it's like I, yeah, who knows I, if they succeeded but it's like holy shit like this I is like they, the, i don't this know is kent, this is we'll game changing you up and jump in and no, out it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Um, but I, i'm just remembering loads of things because I, I studied uh nato and stuff back at mm-hmm. school like I, yeah. I, that was my highest grade i studied law etc um and basically uh russia i think it's just russia it might be the old soviet union but it, they have enough bombs to nuke the entire world like twice or like more than that um yeah and, I don't know about that. I don't know my about main, specifics. Uh, my main point I was going for at the beginning, sorry for starting, I'm trying to word this correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the reason I think there is such a possibility for nuclear war is because Putin's old, man. Putin's getting old, right? He doesn't have much to lose. His, I know he's got kids, um, but his wife has passed away. He doesn't I have should... much to lose. He's got, you know, he's got a lot of backing behind him. And I feel like it's easier at the end of the day uh, for him to go because you know no, no one's else is getting elected like for a while it's just been Putin. I, well, yeah, I mean he even killed them, um, but not to cut you off. He even killed uh, like a fellow like well, a, a guy who was going to run for president, I believe, for Russia. Like he was, he was like an he was an opposite. Like it was like the people was like person as well. Like, I forget his name, but he actually mm. he didn't kill him, but he tried to. He poisoned him. I don't know if you remember this guy. He got poisoned on a plane, 
uh, he luckily lived and then he got put in jail for uh, some sort of petty crimes. I forget his name. I, I don't know off the top of my head, but I don't know what yeah. happened to him. I'm not sure. I just feel like, you know, it, if this is successful for him or not, it's very possible to him to say, like, I, I'm going to press the button because, well, I'm old now. You know, I've lived my life. Why Time not? to end it all. Yeah, you so, know, exactly. I mean, like, how is that not... Uh, like that's definitely and i'm sure you can see why i'm saying that like that i, is I get a, i get what you're saying i think it's like it's thing. one of those things where when, when people have talked about like you know like you know what what if he what if he was to, like what let's say hypothetically right now tomorrow you know there's a nuke to be launched right mm -hmm. what happens you know do we launch nukes back well most likely you know what i'm saying like it, it's going to be all all out at, you know global war you know what i'm saying and obviously the end of everything but it's like you know it, it's one of those things where i think if both sides lose you know, what I mean, I think that's the thing that people like. There has to be someone who's going to have to jump in. You know, I remember this is what I was trying to get to with my statement that, and his threat, right? When he talked about that, that whole threat, I'm pretty sure he had one of his like one of his generals or something like that near him. You could see, in, like, visibly, the general was like, "I don't mean, like, agree with this." Yeah, like, what the fuck are you doing? A like, lot what of the, people have you could tell. You could tell I'm that so you was just like he hasn't been killed. Or I, you would think. You would think, honestly, with the way in which he's going right now, you know, especially with the economy, the Russian economy is entire. Like, what was it? It was like, um, I don't know. It was like one one of the like Russian. It's not a dollar, but you know what I mean. Like the one of the Russian like money Ruple, was I worth think. ruple. Yeah, it was like worth a single cent or a penny. A penny. Mm. Like, it's and it was like, plummeted. oh my god! And literally every company has pulled out. Yeah, uh, Nike, uh, Adidas, uh, McDonald's. I, I did find it funny when Russia has now lost access to OnlyFans. <laughs> they pulled out only fans pulled out isn't that great holy shit that's kind of ironic i'm saying i, I yeah. feel like i, I feel like yeah. they wouldn't but but no, I, yeah, I feel bad man because it, it, it's like it, you know this is really only going to hurt the russian people inherently like i mean this is just going to hurt them what he's doing and you think he would stop at this point and pull back you know what i mean and go okay you know let's stop this is not working i mean it's been two weeks and you're fighting ukraine mm. your neighbors and you sent out a massive military a massive force which I, apparently as well from the reports that have been like actually like found or from what people have seen and what people have found out because of like prisoners that have been caught they're kids like they're, they're like 18 19 20 years old kids like they're, they're not kids you know what i mean but like they're not they're not actual soldiers. They don't even know why they've been sent there. Some of them were yeah, actually apparently... they're, they're there for like peacekeeping and, yeah, yeah, and peace... sometimes well, just military practice. Well, that, that was initially that's how this all began, right? Because um, just before, like on, on February twenty fourth, just before that, right? Um, th this ha this happened a long time ago, but basically in a nutshell, uh, Putin had his forces and like just near, but like it, it was uh, not Belarus, Georgia. It was just just past Georgia and inside Ukraine, just a bit. But like they, they had taken over. This was like um, Russian separatists and whatnot, that kind of stuff. They'd taken over parts of Ukraine already. This was a while ago, but he was kind of peacekeeping. He was holding on to them and not doing anything with them. And this he'd done this for a while. I mean, there's uh, we we have the statement here, right? It's like this thing. Uh, that tells you about it and it's like it was mad right and it was uh i'm just trying to find it, it was eight years yeah that that was it right here right so um there was let me see do, 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 do. yeah so after the remember how we were talking about the russian president or the, the sorry the ukraine's president remember how he got he got run off the old one yeah the old one right after that happened putin obviously knew that he was losing you know a lot of political kind of leverage he, he lost the president who was like on his side who was pro-russian now we had to do something to take action. So he, what he done after this was he thought he'd start using force, right? And this was back in 2013. What, what he done was first he invaded and annexed Ukraine's Crimea Pensilia, which is like an area of Prince, uh, Pensilia, excuse me. Then Russian-backed separatists captured the region of Donetsk, I think it's called, and Luhansk, which is a really weird name, uh, and declared them independent of Ukraine. And since then, like Russia's had control of these two actual like main areas, just all, like they're inside Ukraine. They are part of Ukraine, but he's obviously had control of them. And uh, the conflict, like the, the conflict with Russia, this was before even now, it killed up to 14,000 people and displaced nearly 2 million. Um, and then that, that, that brings us up to now. So for the past eight years, Years, Putin has held on to the regions, right? And this is what's kind of continuously kept us stabilizing Ukraine and keeping it from moving closer to the West and joining NATO. And uh, that's how it kind of built up to this. Like this, for the past eight years, this this war has just started now, people think. And it's like, it has, but not really. <laughs> like it actually started back in 2013 after all this stuff happened, after the it was like, protests. It's a lot more visible, physical, etc. now. Yeah. It, it was more of a political warfare. Build up. Yeah, it, it's kind of built up quite a lot. And, you know, that's how these two places, though, right? These two states that I just mentioned, of course, are not, not not states, you know what I mean? But these two places, these two regions, right? Um, so, again, this is a peninsula and Donetsk and Luhansk, right? What happened was just before they fully invaded, Russian troops were there and they were there for peacekeeping. That was what, you know, that was what was said. And then they moved them in, obviously, on February 24th. And that's how the invasion began. 
Um, but my point is with all this is that again, th this is horrific. You know, like this is all uh, entirely horrific and unnecessary. You know, for like for no good reason other than just to stop NATO. That's all he's doing it, this it, for. He like, doesn't want NATO on his borders. It's like the uh, I'm I'm not going to attempt his name. I don't want to butcher it. It's like the current president of Ukraine's uh, speech when he said. Uh, who would, who will this war affect the most? The people. Yeah. Who what? Who's going to suffer the most? The, the people, people. Who yeah. can stop it? The people. The people. And that was it. it is true because it's like, like like I said, I'm surprised no one's taken out Putin, and I'm surprised his people and his soldiers haven't declined. And like just what? said, I'm not going to because when they get sent into into Ukraine, you know, they can always just not. <laughs> Well, I think I think it's not easy. As individuals. I, I, the, the, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know it definitely yeah, isn't. Yeah, yeah. But I definitely I'm don't think there hasn't been a some sort of retaliation. War. Yeah, like I yeah. exactly. I, like I, I remember. I remember. They there don't was even some know what they're doing. No, no, that's have exactly one hundred percent. Have you seen the clips of Russian tanks breaking down? And you know, and it's happening a lot. They're, they're breaking down, running out of fuel, and there's this oh, Ukrainian yeah, yeah. dude just driving by in his truck, and he's like, "Hey guys, you guys lost." And they start laughing. Uh, you know, they're, they're fine. It's like the football match at World War Two that they're having a great time. They're just having a laugh. Yeah, back that was and that was during like, Christmas. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I can give it, you a lift, but I'd have to take you back to Russia. And they're just joking mm. about it and laughing. And then he drove off. It's like these people I, aren't I, at war. They they don't want the war. They're just soldiers getting sent in to do something that they don't inherently really need to or don't need to do. But they, they do obviously, of course, because they're being told to do it by the you know by their officers. It's politically right? and charged. And that's, it, that it's really cruel. Cool. There was a video on Twitter, right? And I, I feel like Twitter is like my only main news source, like right thing here. And it's not the best I've spent for that. So much time on Twitter recently. Oh, I'm it's telling you, it's unreal. Funny. It's not healthy, right? But like, no, on Twitter there was this one video, and it was so damn like. Listen, people can say what they wish, right? These guys are killing, you know, innocent people and whatnot, but they're, they're just soldiers sent to do a, a job. You know, inherently, like, it's the same with us. If we go to a country and innocent people, like, get killed, of course. Well, obviously, that's acts of war. You're saying, like, you, that's uh, war crimes. You can't just kill civilians for no reason. These guys are, right? But they're also killing soldiers. That's what I mean by innocent people as well, soldiers, right? They're also getting but, done for cluster charges as well. No, it's, it's illegal. It's, yeah, yeah, you know I'm they're doing a lot of really bad stuff. I mean, what was it? More recent stuff, the Children's Hospital. We'll talk about that in a second. That was uh, yeah, they they holy blew up shit. A, that uh, was on a ceasefire as well. A ceasefire hospital. Yeah, yeah, and it's like what the actual fuck? You know what I'm saying? But that that but, is, you know, you've got that drastic friend. It's like, can we mm -hmm. stop fighting now? No, I'm going to yeah, blow up a uh, hospital. Like what the fuck? Like, and that was during the ceasefire. But no, no. So where, where was I going with that? I'm fucking losing myself. There was this video on Twitter, though. Excuse me. There was this video on Twitter, and it was this Russian soldier. Who would obviously, you know, like, I don't know what happened. I think it was like the, I, I don't know. I think they just, the, the Russian soldiers were trying to get past and basically the people were protesting. The, like the Ukrainian people were just standing in front of the tanks. Like, you, you run me over or you're not going. Like, you're going to have to do it. And they wouldn't. So they got out and I think they're on a chat or something like that. And then the Russian soldier, he ends up calling his mother and he's crying on the phone to her telling her what he's actually doing. Like, this is what he's been told to do, and he didn't, He doesn't want to do this. And they're, they're giving him cups of, like, I don't know, soup or whatnot, and, like, help, like giving him something to eat. And it's so, like, holy shit. Like, these are just, like, this is, like, a guy, 20, 20 odds. It's, like, they don't want to be doing this. Like, this is fucking terrible. This is all Putin. It just want to just, again, have more control. Because this, all, this is all about Putin having the blockade between NATO and the rest of, obviously, the West. And, obviously, you know, the Russia, and, of course, the rest of, you know, the Eastern actual borders. It's really how it goes. It's, you know old powerful people sending young vulnerable people to they fight don't. other young vulnerable people because yes. it's just the easiest way for the old powerful people to coexist because well, they're they, not going to die yeah. with all their money no. and wealth and power no no you know but it's some, quite like, sad as well or starving I, I, boy is going to go in with a rifle well that's it you know they're all they're all getting sent in there and at the minute again it's like um you know again god bless the peeps in ukraine honestly again they're, they're fighting their hearts though you know again two weeks of combat against russia you say like, hey, fair enough. It, it, you know, hey, if it was the UK versus Russia, even at that, you know, what I mean, like that's quite absurd. But like, the US, two weeks, four weeks, whatever, right? But like, I, I, Ukraine, it's it's legitimately like it's right next door, and it's it's not like it's something you think would be a big a big issue for them. The fact that it's it's they haven't, you know, you could say conquered. They haven't conquered. They haven't taken over Ukraine already. It's actually a massive embarrassment to Russia and to Putin. Which I'm not saying that in like a, oh, it should be, like, you know what I mean? I'm not saying that in like a, oh, that's a no, good I, thing or whatever. It's like, for it's a just country a, that is so prided on military yeah, and yeah. the way they do things, it has been executed so disgustingly poorly. poorly and I'm yeah. not saying that he should really plan his war crimes. No, yo, no, 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 no. What I'm saying is if he was going to do this, he really has embarrassed himself because with that power, it should have been way more efficient. You know, they, 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 they struggled. 
a lot of the tanks have failed because they went off road. <laughs> Fucking off road. We're the military company like, of the yeah, world. Yeah, I, I, yeah, exactly. Like, but it's like, grass, but it, 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 it's so damn stupid though. It's like you know they had a, I think like forty mile convoys of like straight lines on dirt roads, and it's like. Are you actually dumb? Like, I'm, I'm not saying, like, I'm, I'm not trying to say they should be doing it in a better way like what you're saying, but it's like, you're in a straight fucking line. You're saying, like, you should, there's a whole military of 40,000, like, or, four, uh, what's it, 40 miles convoys of just tanks and, um, you know, actual troops and everything like that, and, and cars and jeeps or whatever, and you're in a straight line on a dirt road. Like, and what, and what part does that, does that sound like an, a good idea? And like you said, you see them going off the road and it's like, these guys are like, they're clearly not being trained well enough. It's like, they've got dozens of men disposable, right? Like, and they, yeah, they can maybe shot, you know, point a gun and shoot. But like, that's about it. That's like the, that's the limits of what they can do. And it's like, but God that's damn. that's literally what Ukraine is doing as well. But well, yeah, better. I mean, but, but, but better, you, this is civilians taking them? arms. They're, they're making trenches, they're making, I think they're called there was, hedgehogs, they're like... The, yeah, they're, the for the tanks, things. yeah, for the tanks, yeah, yeah, they've got the barbed things. There, there was steel companies in Ukraine that have, like, shut down, obviously, production for, like, you know, industrial stuff, and went, we're going to make those non-stop, we're going to we're gonna sit and work and make those, and we're going to put them together. <laughs> Welders and shit, like, I mean, for the people to come together and do that kind of stuff, it's like, God bless you, man. Like, what absolute, absolute morale. And I mean, even the president, this was an amazing thing I saw. And I was like, yo, when I saw this, I was like, like, nothing but respect. The president was an ex-comedian who initially, the guy from 2013, who was the old president before him, right? I believe it was. He was, uh, he pretended to be him. He'd done like a stand-up comedy, you know, pretend, you know, pretended to be him. Like, just as a comedian, kind of, mm -hmm. like, you know, like SNL, you know what I mean? Like SML, like Saturday Night Live, like the American kind of thing, where they do like skits and stuff like that. And they try and be people, what, like, you know what I mean? charades and that sort of thing. Yeah, well, like, they, 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 yeah, they, yeah, they mock them. They do, they do jokes of them. That's kind of what he done from my understanding. And he just pretended to be the president. But people liked him so much that they actually wanted him to be president. And he ran and he won and he became president. He's a comedian. No political background, no political expertise, nothing. Became president and now he's a wartime president. And he's staying there in Ukraine. Even though the United States and like other allies said, hey, we'll, we'll take you out, you and your family. He went, no, no, I'll stay here with my people. And fight with the my best people. quote ever, which then was made. Uh, I don't need a ride. I need ammunition. It is what the a best thing. Dude, I feel like oh, you need like uh, the intro to Borderlands after that. You know? Yeah, like, it's the, like the, fuck, the man. This guy, a, this guy, yeah. God damn, like I mean, dude, what a badass man! Like what a genuine, absolute tank of a man! What a bad, like the balls to be like, fuck you. You know again, like all the like all the Ukrainian people, everyone, just fuck you. Like we don't care. Like yeah, it's horrible what's happening. But if there's anything to be taken away from it, it's that Ukraine is their own people and Ukraine are strong. You know what I mean? Again, two weeks, even if they, you know, who knows, right? We've obviously got like another couple days, of course, what days till this episode comes out. We don't know what could happen in two days. Something drastic could change, right? And I hope it does, but for the better, of course, obviously. Um, at the minute, there's been dozens of talks about ceasefires and whatnot for the time being, for passageways to be open for, you know, obviously, um, what's the civilians get through? I don't um, see ceasefire happening. No, no, no. But I mean, well, that's what just happened. There was meant to be ceasefires. Uh, this was like the first, one of the many I talks. I think they'll lie. And, it's oh, it, no, it was. It was a ceasefire, and then they killed civilians. Another ceasefire. Oh, yeah, civilians. that's what it was, wasn't it? Like, Another they, they ceasefire. Said, We're not going to fight anymore and oh, proceeded yeah. to bomb a children's hospital what like i mean of all the things you know what i mean it's like that is by yeah. no means it's respectful. not like a military base or anything it is yeah literally a children's hospital in the most morbid way spawn kill it's just it's why why you know okay right. it's, civilians it's, you know what that's that's a low but killing children Targeting a because hostage you of want land back is the most pathetic thing I've ever seen from a war-born nation. And also, in the military, honor is a very high thing. Oh, definitely, so, yeah. I don't even think they're a military base anymore, or a military mm. society. No, no. Uh, honestly, what I think is, is just... And this is, this is Putin, a scared man who problem. knows... This is this is Putin who's scared of what what is inherently just it's it's coming, which is the future. It's it's change, you know. Like again, we we got all the things here right now, right? All the notes. And I'm gonna read them out here because it is actually I learned about this obviously, and obviously, Joe, so you can see the notes. It was so fascinating because like holy shit, right? So everybody should know, of course, if you don't already, uh, the Berlin Wall, right? This was like the whole Soviet Union was a thing uh, from like 1917, I believe it was. Uh, let me just find out here right now the, the exact dates. 1921, right? That was uh, that 1921 or was it 19? Yeah, 1917 was when the Russian Re uh, Revolution happened, right? 
right? And then that was when the, the Tsar and the whole, like, Russian families were thrown. And that's when, obviously, the, the Soviet Union came into place. And it was actually quite fascinating, but actually, um, Ukraine was actually independent of Russia. This was Ukraine for the first time in over 200 years, because it was actually, like, captured uh, and made part of the Russian Empire in the 18th and 19th century, right? So it wasn't a part of the Russian Empire always, but it was captured back then. 200 years later, though, it's freed, obviously, because of the end of the Russian Empire, because of the Russian Revolution back in 1917. And then they gained independence from Russia, right? Uh, or from Russian rule for uh, about five years, right? And then in 1921, well, four years, 1921 uh, was actually one of the first Soviet republics that was made because the Soviet Union was taking, obviously, other states around it, like the other republics. Poland, obviously, of course, eventually, stuff like that, all that kind of jazz. Uh, was it East Germany? I think it's East Germany got taken because it was like, Germany was split, remember, between allies and, well, it was because it was um, the you know, United States and the rest of Europe, of course, like obviously Britain, etc. They got, was it West Germany? It was, and then East Germany was split. They were split in half, and then they put up the Berlin Wall. I actually... This is like something I'm well, not educated th this in. Yeah. Is, this is what I know about. Yeah, so that's what it was, I'm pretty sure, right? And that was how Russia took control of East Germany. You know what I mean? And that's how you'd had spies going in and out. Like, it was what happened. This was during the Cold War as well. Anyway, though, 1921, right? This is uh, the, the fall of the Soviet Union happens, right? And from there, right? This, you know, after the fall of the Soviet Union, many of the republics, right? After 70 years again of rule, many of the republics that were captured, right? And there's dozens here, Poland, Hungary, the Czech Republic, etc., And of course, Ukraine, all start declaring independence from the Soviet domination, right? And they, they start becoming their own states again, their own actual, again, regions. But what happened, of course, was obviously Russia eventually got control again. They started becoming more built up. They started becoming more formalized. Obviously, Soviet Union was gone, but they started getting themselves back on track, of course. And that's where, obviously, control wanted to come back. But by this point, thing was the change was always happening, you know? Um, it all started in 1999, right? Poland, Hungary, and Czech, the, the Czech Republic, those three, all ex-Soviet like Union controlled actual republics, they joined NATO. Then in 2004, seven more countries joined NATO, um, those being Estonia, Latvia, uh, Lithuania, Slovakia, Romania, Slovenia, and Bulgaria, right? And that was, like, this is huge amounts, you know, that we're talking like 10 different actual countries, right? All joining now NATO, right? The enemies of Russia that were all ex-Soviet like states. And now from there, what happened, right, is that now the Soviet Union, or well, obviously Russia's, like, actual control or, you know, like, wedge in between the West and the East, which, had reached, you know, East being Russia and the West being obviously us, that was getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And that only left three different countries, right? There were ex-Soviet unions as well. Ukraine, Georgia, and Belarus. And that's where we are currently. Now, Georgia and Belarus, uh, or uh, Belarus is still want to be a part of Russia, I'm, I'm sure. Um, but Georgia and Ukraine are both made it very, they want to join, obviously, you know, NATO. And that's where the issue lies. That's where the issue is. You, you know, again, Putin doesn't want this. He doesn't want, you know, the whole of the West being right next door to them. And yeah, can you blame him? He knows what's going to happen, of course, inherently. Not even, I don't think the West is going to just start a war on, you, you know, like, on Russia for no good reason. But it's like, he doesn't want them being right next door, which is, uh, you can understand, but it doesn't mean he, well, he, has he is giving us a very good reason. Oh, yeah. I, I, an incredibly valid fucking reason. You know what I mean? Like, 100%. You know, and valid. he knows that because he's already pre threatened us. Well, that was it. And then again, like, it, it was funny because it wasn't funny, but it was like, it was insane because his, his demand to stop this war, basically, to prevent this, right, this war from happening, was uh, um, NATO. Because he said this to the West just uh, just before he invaded. Because he, again, he spent months denying that he was going to invade. Oh, it's no planned invasion, nothing. But then he made his demands clear. I want NATO to move their border and like their, their military presence back to where it was in 1991, which is, if anybody doesn't know again, this is before Poland joined NATO, same with Czech Republic, Hungary, etc. This is way this was also before back. Putin was even in power because he yeah, started this was in 1999. The, 1991 was when the Soviet Union fell. So it wants to go right back to where the Soviet Union was. So basically you want to erase 20, two decades, 20 years worth of work, two decades, just so there won't be a war and you think that's going to happen not a chance and it didn't what happened actually again quite ironically the opposite was the entire obviously of course of europe started upping its defenses and started getting themselves ready for anything that might happen hence the war began you know what I'm saying because obviously the, the west wasn't going to just say oh okay we're going to give up all this area that we spent 20 years letting people come join us and not taking but letting people come join us and protecting we're not just going to give that up and let you have that sphere of influence again and that control and that you know again that power you know what i mean not a case not a chance excuse me and that's where we are currently you know and it, it's I, quite I just mad. find it funny that he's upset that there's more people basically becoming a part of nato because and nato is better. getting quite big now oh um, yeah so it would basically just be core russia and then the odd country here and there versus the whole russia of NATO. china so north korea he really because he, do, he doesn't care if there's a war he's not trying to prevent a war he's trying to prevent 
uh, people taking this uh, self, you know, awarded pride of mm. Russia. Because if he really didn't want to war and he wanted to Russia to bloom, the smart thing to do would be to, to all be a part of NATO. There would yeah. be no war. Right, no. there would be no war, but he, he doesn't he, care yeah. about that. He, he tried cares to say about Russia's pride. Which he, he tried to make. A, I heard. I heard somewhere, sir, Cotton, He tried to say something like he apparently said to George W. Bush about the concept of him maybe joining NATO, and George W. Bush didn't like the idea. And I was like, that's complete horseshit. I, I mean, maybe he did. I know. Right? Who knows? But it's like, I doubt that. I doubt that happened. Right? But it, it's a premise of like again, him not wanting more, more, you know, different countries or more republics, whatever you want to call them, to join NATO. Him, him doing this war has inherently just caused more to join NATO or to actually start really considering it seriously. Mm. For example, um, what is it? Is it Switzerland uh, and uh, is it Finland? You, you know, Joseph, uh, up top. There's Norway, Switzerland, and is it Finland? On, on the map? Finland, I, yeah. Yeah, right. I think it is. I know. Or it's Norway and Switzerland. I don't know if it's not in Switzerland and it's Finland. Anyway, the, the Swiss are like, like, they are notoriously known for being neutral. Like, and first of all, we're pretty sure it's second. They were all neutral, mm -hmm. you know, never, ever, ever against any side, all neutral. However, because of him making threats directly towards them, that's inherently just kind of put them in the idea of, oh, maybe we should join NATO. If you're going to make threats towards us, there's no, there's no neutrality. <sighs> and that's like, why for the first time. Sorry, I do no. like the ideology behind Putin's like, I know what will make them join us and not NATO. Yes. We'll fucking threatening invade them. them. Threatening invading. Yes. <laughs> what a Which great is thing. Not only going to persuade Ukraine to not join NATO or to now join NATO, um, it's also going to make the countries that were once also part of the Soviet Union go, shit, we're going to join we're NATO now because yeah, you're coming bye -bye. for us next. Oh, yeah. That's it. And it's like, because that's God what will happen. If, if Russia takes oh, yeah. over Ukraine, and it's a, unfortunately a possibility, it won't stop there. If this is no. the way he thinks. I know, of course, a lot of people have said this, you know, people, there was people that were like, oh, end the war, you know, we should, we should not get involved, let Ukraine fall, and it's like, you, you think that he's just going to stop at Ukraine? You think that's what's going to happen? You think he's just going to stop there? Oh, we got, well, we got Ukraine and the whole of we the West. Ukraine, and, guys, yeah, oh my God. Yeah, but it's like, you know, it's the same, like, terminology and the same kind of mindset of, like, Hitler, for example, right? I hate to mention him, but it's the truth. Um, when Hitler took, was it, where was it? I can't remember which country it was, but it wasn't Poland, but it was before Poland, right? Because Poland was what started a war, I'm pretty sure, right? The, the Second World War fully. It was when he took Poland. Anyway, though, I think it was like Hungary or something like that. One, one of the countries. Like, it was, I'm, I'm not sure. I, Hungary sounds right. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it was. Anyway. Uh, it's been a while since I spoke about if, World War if, if only Call Me was here right now. Call Me would help me, right? Call Me Dino Gamer. Anyway, Drop a um, call what happened was the the West thought when Hitler was you know they didn't want to start another world war this is after World War One they didn't want to start another world war so what did the West do the British and the Americans a you know don't they they, they signed treaties and agreements don't take any more lands okay or you know like you'll get in trouble okay he went and took more lands oh they didn't punish him that was bad you know but sign more treaties okay you want to take more land. You, 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 you got to do something about it. You, if you don't stop them or if you just keep rolling on your belly every time something happens because of the thought of war, you're gonna it's going to just continuously keep happening anyway. Like, if Putin can do this once, it, like, say he went and went, say he did go for Ukraine the way he did, right? But nobody acted upon it, right? The whole of the West, NATO, etc., the European Union, nobody cared. What do you think he would do next? He's going to go, well, that was easy. Or that was that wasn't that bad. Nobody cared. Let's I'll go get for another the rest one. of them. Yeah, like, oh, well, go, oh, I got let's the rest go. of them. I'll take yeah. one that we never had. Well, that's it. exactly that's it. You know what I mean? And that's kind of the mindset that people have been thinking about. It's like, if you honestly think that you would stop there, then you're probably not thinking in a smart kind of way. Like, I'm not saying you're stupid you're for thinking about that. the man that bombed a children's hospital because he wants land back. So I don't think it's above him to go. No, I don't know, think his moral I won't code is an end there. Country that we never had. Yeah. And people are like, well, you know, NATO should stay out of it. NATO shouldn't be expanding their borders or their, you know, their military presence. It's like, why? So we can let tyrants like this continue to reign. You know what I'm saying? Like, this guy is a political tyrant. He's not, he doesn't have a fair country. You know, again, his political rival who was going up against him, this this guy, a really good guy, I, I, a man of the people, he got poisoned. <laughs> and they, they all, everybody knows it was obviously because of Putin, but he got poisoned and almost killed because he was running up against Putin and exposing him. And survived and, then and got sent to jail. Got, he survived and then went to jail for like the most pettiest of crimes. And it's like, and you think he this is... He by bread. 12 years. Yeah, 12 years, he's gone. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you think this guy is just... Putin's this good guy who's... Yeah, Russia's all right. It's not too bad. Like, I, no. One by no means that is that the case. If you cross you it, just he don't might see put it. In, you in jail. Putting you in jail, God dang. 
But it, it's um, I know it, it's quite mad. I said the current situation, and I said it's kind of worrying as well because there's a genuine threat of like, all right, what happens if this is World War Three? Like, I feel like, you know, I don't know about us, Joe. I don't know, man. I don't know about the audience listening as well. But it, it's quite a good question, is like as to words, will this start World War Three, right? And we'll talk about that at the very end. But it, it's kind of like, do we think we'll see a, a third world war in our lifetime? I mean, you never know, right? You never know. It, it's madness. Joe. Yep. Do you think this is gonna start the like the next like? World, like world war? <laughs>